to you for it. <laughs> All right. All right. Did, uh... <laughs> Talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody in the back. Focus. Right. Focusing up. Oh, oh. <laughs> I learned from Ashley. <laughs> no, I didn't. I used to do that in my own classroom. Hands and bigs. Hands and Stop. All right. So, did uh, did anyone enjoy that exercise? Yes. Did you? It sounded like this group was having a lot of laughs over here. Yeah. Did we, uh, did we come up with a lot of good things that the Bible is and not the Word is? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, yes. hold on to those because we're going to come back to it later on in the uh, when we're doing stuff together. The first thing we're actually going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about the, the Bible itself. Um, so, does anyone here have a, a part of the Bible that they've been reading a lot lately? Brian. Yes. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. And who's the author of that book? Solomon, um, they think. <laughs> sure about that? The author of it? Gosh, God. Trick yeah. question. It may have been a trick question. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Sorry. So we're going to actually be going through a lot of verses today. So if you want to use your Bible, you may have trouble keeping up. So I put a lot of them on the screen. And we're going to go through that. So give us the first one. First one. <laughs> all right. So, the first one is, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So, every part of the Bible, um, all scripture, which when God says all, he means all, has been given, is, uh, is given by inspiration. So, the man of God who... Uh, scribes it like in the, uh, the case of Ecclesiastes, they think that um, Solomon, he said, was mm -hmm. the one who actually penned it, but it was inspired of God. And we know that, or as we learn more from the Bible, we learn that God is the author of the Bible. And I think it's interesting because when you look at most books, whether it be any book in the library or a bookstore, when you open it up, it says who the author is in it. And just like that, the Bible also says who the author is within it. And it's God. Uh, let's go to the next verse. Um, but I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which I preach of me is not after men. For I neither received it of men, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. So if you were worried that they were considering only the Old Testament, even the gospel was not taught to them. It was a revelation from Jesus Christ. So both old, new, all scripture, the author is God. Um, let's actually turn in our Bibles to 2 Peter, chapter 1. And do I have any volunteer readers? Shane, can you read 2 Peter, chapter 1, verses 16 through 21? For we have not followed cunningly devised fables, when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory, when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do dwell, that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn, and the day star arise in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Thank you. I like how that start uh, that uh, word, the portion that we started off with. It says, For we follow not cunningly devised fables. And some of the world, that's what they think when they talk about the Bible. They think, oh, those are just, it's just some bunch of guys put that together. It's a bunch of fables, a bunch of stories. It's good stories, but it's just stories. But it's not cunningly devised fables. And as we go on, we, we find that Peter, who is actually on the, the mount with Jesus, and it says here he saw... What is it exactly? 
a voice came from heaven, and we heard when, uh, when we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a... Oh, sorry. <laughs> a little bit further back. Um, we received God the Father, honor and glory. There came a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. When you read that story, Peter was actually there and heard God's voice say, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And he says, But we have a more sure witness. And that more sure witness is what it discusses right after, which is the scriptures. That's our more sure witness. So when we read the word, we have a more sure witness than hearing God's voice from heaven proclaiming his son. That's crazy. And that's what we have here in this, in this book in front of us. And we may not have the original uh, texts for, you know, for a lot of it, but we have a really good uh, version. And we have a lot of really good translations to help us understand it. And this is words directly from the creator of the heavens and the earth to us, to mankind, to his children. Uh, I think we have one more verse to go to. Yeah, let's go to the next verse. And just to drive it home just a little bit more. Uh, for this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when we receive, for when ye receive the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. So, if you didn't already realize it, which I'm pretty sure everyone in this room did, just firming up, who is the author of the Bible? God. 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 And uh, if we think about who God is in our lives, but not only in our lives, but who is he in general, this God who created everything that we, our senses, can come in contact with, and more, this spirit who has shaped the universe for us, who has put things in motion to be able to save our souls, to have a relationship with us, to bless us, and for us to bless him, and for us to go out into this world and help save other people. It is, uh, it's amazing that, that we have this, that we have this book, that we have this sure witness that we can rely on, that have answers. Joey, uh, a couple of teachings ago, did a, a teaching on how relevant the Bible is today how answers that you're looking for today are in this book, and how you can search it and find those answers that you need. Um, so, can we all agree that this book is pretty important? Yes. yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> if it is important, well then why is it important? And that's what we're going to look at next. <laughs> next verse, please. <laughs> Does, would anyone like to read this for me? Uh, Jeannie. Right? Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. So, thy words were found, and I did eat them. And I want you to remember that, because we're going to come back to that too. When you think of actually consuming something, taking it in to be a part of you. But more than that, Thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. That's what this word is. This word that we can read, these words from our Father, it's the joy of our heart. If you need joy in your heart, if you are lacking joy, well, there's plenty of it in here. <laughs> and it's not only the joy, it's the rejoicing. So you can keep going back over and over and over again. Next verse, please. Jessica, so enjoy. Read this one. <laughs> And when the temper came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made of bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So, every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. When you think about what you need to live, what you need to survive, you know, there's a lot of things that, you know, you feel like you can get by without, you know, a roof over your head. Yeah, I need a roof over my head. But there are people surviving without a roof over their head. You know, I need clothes. You know, there are people who are getting by with very minimal clothing. But food, if you, there's the exact number of days that you can go without food before that's it. And 
the word says that you're not living by, by that physical bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And this are words from God. These are words from Him. And these are words for us to live by. These are instructions um, for us to live our lives by. Next verse, please. <laughs> Can I get another reader? Michael Weber. And he answered and said unto them, My mother and my brethren, are these which hear the word of God and do it. I love how this verse, uh, this is Jesus speaking, by the way. He actually said, which hear the word of God and do it. And this is what Jesus, uh, uh, we're going to, the end do it is not part of this teaching, but we have to do the end do it part. <laughs> but Jesus answered that what had happened was he was in a, a group and they said, your, your actual physical mom and and brothers. brothers are at the door. And he was like, uh, he answered and said unto them, My mother and my brethren are these which hear the word of God and do it. That's who Jesus Christ considers his brethren, is the ones who hear his father's words, hear his father's words, and do it. Uh, next verse, please. Amanda? But if he said, yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Who wants to be blessed? Raise your hand. Blessed? In the back? Yeah? Okay, good. Seems like I got everyone on that one. Well, if you want to be blessed, <laughs> rather blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Remember we were talking before a little bit about eating it, consuming that word, and keeping it? Well... You're going to be blessed if you're hearing God's word and you're keeping it. Who, uh, who here remembers pretty much everything that they learned in second grade? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, our, our physical memories don't last forever. Everything that we take in, we don't take in 100% and keep it forever. So these things that we're hearing, to actually be able to keep it, you have to continue to bring it in. You have to continue to hear those words so that those blessings can continue to be a part of, of your your day-to-day -day life. Because blessings is what we want. We definitely don't want cursings and problems and every other evil thing in this world. We want blessings. I want blessings. Who wants blessings again? Everyone? All right. This guy. 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 This any other readers? Andrew? Acts 18, 28. For he mightily convinced the Jews, and that publicly, showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. That Jesus was Christ. This is another thing that the word actually does. I just threw, threw this in there because I really loved it. That um, it actually, it shows by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. And part of our job here is to tell people that Jesus is Christ. That Jesus is our Lord. So if you want to be able to tell people why you think or believe that Jesus is Lord because he is, well, the scriptures are going to help you because they're going to show what this verse says. And this verse is accurate because who wrote it? Solomon. Solomon. Time out for who wrote it? God. That's right. God is the author of it. Now, someone else may have penned it, but God is the author of it. And uh, who here thinks that the creator of the heavens and the earth makes uh, makes mistakes? No? I don't think so either. I think he's, he does a great job. Uh, I haven't seen any uh, any issues with the stars lately. <laughs> there. I haven't seen too many. Uh, <laughs> so... We'll go on to, we've got uh, two more on why this word is so important to our lives. And if you want to know more, because I'm not going to, this is an exhaustive list. We're not going to every verse on why it's important. Does anybody have any ideas on how you can find out more about why God's word is important? Anyone? Any ideas on it? Uh, like how you can find out why God's important to you, aside from what we're doing tonight. Read the Bible. Yeah. Read the Bible. Read the Bible. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> 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 That's genius. Yeah, that is. 
Yeah. Anybody else have any other ideas of how we can uh, get some other information aside from reading the Bible? Fellowship. Fellowship, also a good one. We Mary? can ask God himself. We can. We have Holy Spirit within Spirit. us. Absolutely. Yeah. Jessica? Man um, manifestations. Manifestations, yeah. We can definitely receive information and, and uh, hear from God that way. Did I hear it? See another hand? Ben? Yes? Just read parts of the Bible. Yeah, yeah. yeah you don't have to read the whole thing at once. <laughs> take a while. James Michael. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I mean, there's there's plenty of ways to get to get more information. I mean, the, the, the source is the Bible. I mean, if you want to know more about why it's important, it tells you within itself. But obviously there's more. We have Holy Spirit within us. We can commune with God. We have our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ to exhort us and to share what's in this Bible with us. That's another way of hearing God's Word. There are teachings to be heard. There are books written. There are supplemental uh, things. But And those things are great. But there's no, there's no um, replacement for the Word of God and the Spirit within us. Um, can I get an amen? Amen. 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 All, right. <laughs> All right, let's turn to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. All right. And in 2 Timothy, did I say chapter 3? I meant chapter 3, so good. <laughs> chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is given by <laughs> all scripture is given by inspiration of God. We read this earlier. But what we didn't focus on was it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. These are some things that the Bible is, and some things that it's it's good it, reading the word and taking this in, taking these scriptures in, that we know are authored by the creator of the heavens and the earth who put us here for a reason, it's profitable for doctrine. It's profitable for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. And if you don't know what those things mean, we already discussed how you can find out that information. <laughs> Same things. But the Bible, it will explain even in more detail what those, those things are. So, and those are other teachings. So, but if we go back one more verse before that to 315, it also says, and that from a child, and that from a child, thou hast known the holy scriptures, which is able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. It's able to make us wise. Um, I would, uh, I'm actually going to, at the very end, I'm going to ask you a few, few more questions. But I would definitely encourage you to study wisdom and the benefits of wisdom. The benefits of wisdom are, are great. There is, there is much to be gained by gaining wisdom. God's wisdom, not the wisdom of men, because the wisdom of men is, is worthless. But God's wisdom is worth so much. And uh, if you have time, study for it. But that's another a, a great thing that God's Word is for, is it's able to make us wise. All right, moving on from there. What's the cost of not taking in God's Word, of not reading God's Word and, and making it a part of your life? Is there a cost, or can yeah, we get by without sense. taking it in? Death, Ooh, misery. It's kind of uh, basically on the other end of, uh, one, you're not going to get the blessings from it. You know, all the things that we just discussed of why it's important, it's basically the other end of it. I have a couple of verses that uh, kind of talk about it specifically. Uh, let's get the next one. And if I can get a reader. Any? Mm -hmm. Just. For my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. Hmm. So, uh, they, I, 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 yeah, sorry, that one's autocorrect. Uh, 
But the more that's for me. The more important part of this verse is the beginning, which is my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, because that was rejected knowledge. Um, that knowledge that we can get, that information that's in this book from the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the author of this book that has been able to change and save people. Uh, when they weren't taking in that knowledge, when they were rejecting it, they were destroyed. God's people were destroyed because of it in this scenario. Uh, let's, hear, let's go to the next one. And Jesus answered, and Jesus answering said unto them, Do ye therefore err, because you know not the scriptures, neither the power of God? They didn't know the scriptures. And because they didn't know the scriptures, they were erring. It's hard to do the right thing when you don't know what the right thing is. It's hard to follow God when you don't know what he's trying to tell you. And God's already told us so much in this more sure witness, the Bible. And if we don't know it, then we're going to be making mistakes, and we're going to be tripping over things, and we're going to be in the dark. We're not going to have that light path that I, I've talked about in the past. That Well, I've talked about it. God talks about it. That, that as we're on God's path, that our, bright, our paths get brighter and brighter. We're not going to be on that path if we're not taking in and getting on that path and saying, God, what have you told me? And then, like Jessica said, you know, checking in with our spirit and, and Mary and saying, God, now I need specific information for my, my life. But there is so much in here that God has already told you. And it seems, as far as I've seen, that... If God's already told you it here, he wants you to read it here. And then he will add to this. Uh, so, <laughs> amen? Uh, so, earlier, we had kind of gotten together and we had talked about what the Bible is and what the Word of God is. And we had answered that question together um, in small groups. Uh, I was going to kind of write it out, but... Uh, what I'd like to do, instead of writing it out, because I feel like our list got pretty long, if I could have someone kind of read over the list of the things that, uh, that your groups had come up with, just so we, could, we can kind of hear it together. Mary, do you want to start okay. off? Sure. Um, the Bible is powerful, enlightening, truth, living, philosophical, directional, inspired, spherical, relevant, encompassing, Profitable, wisdom, knowledge, applicable, revelation, hopeful, penetrating, mind. I like, well, I said that. Love, <laughs> personal, <laughs> my foundation, awesome, my shield and buckler, my joy and rejoicing, instructional, awakening, rewarding, winning. 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 Yep. Wow. wow. <laughs> that was, even before we together started looking at verses of why it was so important and still haven't even looked at verses of why the Bible itself, you know, says that it is, that's the list that, that, that group that we came up with. I mean, I just didn't hear anything negative in there. That was all amazing. Um, do you have mm -hmm. the list for your group? Do you have it? Yeah. Would you like to read your group? Sure. List? Word of God is a guide, a counselor. Is alive, is true, harmonious, God breathed, profitable, stellar, dope, comfort, <laughs> it's helpful, it's a weapon, it's good, historical, educational, it's bread, it's literal, metaphorical, figurative, loving, splits asunder even to the dividing of joint and marrow, it's just. Prophetical, abundant, <laughs> musical, romantic, almost done. Will of God is wisdom, it is knowledge, it is healing, it is blessed, it rhymes, it has types, <laughs> figures, and shadows. It's a cookbook and it's doing. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah. I, also, just amazing things out of one book. Out of one book. But you would expect that when the author of it is God. That that many amazing... I mean, talk about writing the uh, the internal... You know, the, the back cover or the internal flap of, like, why you should read this book. Yeah. Just read these lists. Do you want to read our list, Shane? Or? 
some of it. Not it. Uh, I think being the last list makes a lot of repeats, but it's pure, Amazing. true, faithful, educational, profitable, quickened or alive, powerful, proclaims Jesus is Lord. Uh, in James 3.17 it says it's peaceful, gentle, easy to be uh, entreated. entreated, full of mercy, without partiality, good fruit, fruits without hypocrisy. The word of God is the will of God. Uh, it is heroic, it saves Amen. souls, it gives you salvation. Amen. Um, it brings deliverance, produces believing, as it says in Romans yeah. 10, 17. Effectual and uh, complete. In those verses, it's pretty uh, good at describing itself for us. Yeah. Um, the, it's, this book is, I think the, the, all of the, one of the words I like to, it's all encompassing is, it is awesome. <laughs> Just like God is awesome, yeah. and you can be awestruck by God, that's awesome. what this Bible is. That's what this book is. Uh, I have a few verses I'm just going to read through very quickly. I was going to kind of go through them together, but for the sake of time, I'm going to add just a few more to those lists. Psalms 119, uh, verse 105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That's what the word is. It's a light unto your path. <clears throat> Jeremiah 23, 29, is not my word like a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh rocks in pieces? Mm. You might have to study that further, but like a, like a hammer. <laughs> um, Romans 15, 4. For, who, uh, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. It's mm -hmm. for our learning. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Comfort of the scriptures. It's a comfort. And it helps us to have hope. Hope in this world. When hope is needed. It's a needful thing in our lives. Uh, Ephesians 6.17 And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. It's the sword of the Spirit. Uh, Hebrews 4.12 for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. James 1, uh, verse 23 through 24. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his face in a glass or in a mirror. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. It's a mirror for us. It's a way for us to see ourselves, how God sees us, the true selves of who we are. God's word says it's like a glass, it's like a mirror. Uh, some other things I just wrote down is it's a historical record. Um, it's an instruction manual for life. It's God's heart. It's God's call to his family, it's his will, and it is extremely important for your lives, Amen. for my life, for our lives. Amen. Um, uh, Bob actually brought up a verse in our group that I want us to read. If we want to turn to James chapter 3. Actually, Bob, if you want to read it, that would be perfect. Three seventeen. Mm -hmm. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the good righteous son of the <laughs> <laughs> Those are some, some pretty uh, some pretty big lists. Do you think we could even go on from there if we spent more time? Yeah. Yeah. I think that we could. I think that we absolutely could. Um, so the last thing I want to talk about is what should we do with this? What should we do with this, this book, this awesome book, authored by God, our Father, um, and is so profitable? It is so many profitable things. It has so many amazing, profitable characteristics for us, personally. Uh, next verse. Yes. This is talking about the Bereans. 
these were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that, they were more noble in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. They were considered more noble because, one, they received, uh, they received the word with readiness of mind. They were ready. They went in to the meetings where uh, they were about to hear the word, ready to receive it. They're like, I am here for a reason. Give it to me. And then they didn't just take it. They also said, now I'm going to search the scriptures daily. Daily. Whether those things are so. Next verse. 1 Timothy 4.13 Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, and to doctrine. Um, something that I feel like I, um, we've kind of been talking about is you hear the word hearing the word a lot. For a book that we as a group have determined is so valuable, it is imperative that we are hearing God's words that are within it daily, searching them daily and giving attendance to them daily. And just like in the word where it talks about, I found the word and I ate it, who here eats all of their food on Sunday and then doesn't eat again until the next Sunday? <laughs> who here eats all their food on Thursday and doesn't eat again until next Thursday? Does anyone here do that? Would anyone get super hungry if they did that? Yeah. I can't even go more than like two hours without getting <laughs> We need to be hearing God's word. And not only do we need to be hearing it, we need to be reading it. Um, it's too valuable. If we have this, this book from God with so many answers in it, why would we not spend our time reading it? Why would we not do it? And the answer is because we let things get in the way. I let things get in the way. If I, if I asked you, and don't raise your hand to this, who reads their Bible every day? Guess who could not raise their hand? Me. I could not raise my hand for that. I couldn't. That's ridiculous. For a book that we just determined as a group, God actually in his own Bible, in his own word, determines how valuable it is. For us to think about that and not even just take it in, but actually to put out from our own selves those things that we know that the Bible is, that it is to us, and then to the next day, turn around and say, oh, I can't read the Bible today, I really got to get to work, I really got to get this nap in, I really got to get something else, and then walk around being confused as to what to do with our lives, <laughs> well, I, yeah, I don't know, I can't imagine what I want to do. <laughs> we forgot to read our instruction manual. <laughs> We forgot to get wisdom from God. We need to be studying it. We need to memorize it. If we're not studying the word daily, we're not reading it daily, we're not going to have it to give to other people. When your fellow brother and sister in Christ needs that encouragement, you won't have the word at the tip of your tongue to give them. When you're out in public and you're trying to share why you're a Christian because you're trying to be bold, because we prayed for boldness tonight, You'll have boldness and you won't have much for God to recall to your remembrance because he can't recall things that were never there. <laughs> he can give you the words to speak, yes, and thank God for God's grace and his faithfulness and his mercy. And he can help us with all these things despite not reading the word. But he is giving, he's given it. He made it so easy. It's right here. And nowadays, it's not even like we have to fight for it. I mean, you just go to the store and buy it. There's so many resources. You go online, there's free websites that have it. There's free concordances. There's free study materials everywhere. It's on your phone. It's on your phone, exactly. I've got like three Bibles on my iPhone. Like, Only three? And I still can't read it every day. <laughs> I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. I literally have it on me at all times if I'm connected to a satellite or a cell phone tower, and I still don't read it every day. Ridiculous. It, I'm just on my own. I'm just saying that towards myself. And the last thing that we need to be doing is we need to meditate on it. It's not enough just to read it. That's the first step. You have to hear it. You have to know it. But then you have to meditate on it. You have to think about how it applies to your life. What God's really saying. How it ties into the other things in the Bible. You have to meditate. God's Word talks about meditating on it. Meditating. We need to take that time. 
We need to fight for the time. And it doesn't take long, even a little bit. You think about all those amazing characteristics, all those wonderful things that we talked about that the Bible is today. Even if you read one verse of something so potent, which should have been on those lists. I didn't even put it on ours. <laughs> it's wisdom. It's, it's words from God every time. So, Andrew and I have been talking about uh, doing something, and I've spoken with some of the others of you in the fellowship. And we're going to start this. And we're starting it as of tomorrow. So if you want to join us, by all means, go ahead. And this is what we're going to do. We are, as a group, going to read one chapter of this Bible, of this book, every day, together, as a family and as a group. And we're not going to read all of our chapters at the beginning of the work, at the beginning of the week. We're not going to do that. We're going to read one every day. We're going to get fed every day. And after praying about it, uh, we've decided to start with um, a book of the Bible that I know that Brian Lattimore likes. Because um, <laughs> they talked to him about it a little bit. But uh, that actually deals with wisdom. And it's Proverbs. Yeah. So as of tomorrow, um, anyone who would like to join us, because this family is going to... We are a family that moves forward. We're a family that encourages and takes care of one another. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to take care of each other. And uh, so that we can take care of each other, and so that we have God's word ready to go for each other and for our own lives, every day I'm committing to reading one book of the Bible. And we're going to start with Proverbs. And uh, if I mess up, well, then I will apologize to God and to you. Uh, but that's going to happen. Sometimes things are going to come up and you're going to miss a day. But we're going to try our hardest to do one chapter every day. So, does anyone here feel like that's something that they would want to or could do? Alright. That is, that's fantastic, and that really just blesses me so much. Uh, one thing that we are going to, yes, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> just one to do. One to clap. Uh, I do, I do. The church of Thessalonica is known as an exemplary church in the Bible. Their love was superb, and their doctrine of the, or their knowledge of doctrine was really well too. These Bereans share three verses in Corinthians, and they're known as more noble than them for these specific things. Now, I think we can be like the Bereans, honestly. And uh, what's stopping? Nothing should stop us. I mean. We can be like that. Why not? And so, one thing that I know is on David and I's heart, as far as the vision for this fellowship, if we could teach you one thing, it would be that you would read this, this book for yourself. If, if, if anybody would ask you, what did you learn, or what have you learned at David and Andrew's fellowship? It would have been like, they told me how to read the Bible for myself. And the, I feel like that would be the hugest blessing on my plate. So, yeah, that's all. I just want to add that. So, yeah, chapter a day. And it's going to be great. You know, I uh, it's going to give us so much, so much to talk about. I have a feeling that it will make our teachings more dynamic, and it's going to add wisdom to our lives and all of those blessings that come with wisdom and all of those things that we just talked about of why this book is so important and so powerful and can change our lives. So I'm excited, and uh, we're going to start that. And I'm actually really excited because we're going to start going into family camp, so it's going to be really easy for me to get that and start and then keep going with it afterwards. Um, and if anyone, you know, if anyone needs help or wants to read together or anything else like that, we're here. We're a family. We're a group. We're going to take care of each other. Thanks, guys. So is Chapter 1 supposed to be finished by the end of today or tomorrow? We're going to do it tomorrow. Okay. So starting tomorrow, <laughs> Proverbs Chapter 1. So, we got a lot of word in, in tonight, and, you know, I want to make sure that we set ourselves up for success. I want to give you a full 24 hours. No. <laughs> as a, I just was curious, as an idea, I don't know if, not to keep each other accountable, but if you want to be helped to be accountable, Brian and I are actually already doing this, and we 
text each other every day. What text was me. this? Is actually Brian's idea. So if you <laughs> want to, we can text you too, and then Perfect. you will remember we that we read it. We started on the first. There are 31 proverbs and 31 days in the month. Oh, you guys are doing proverbs too? Yeah. 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 That's awesome. <laughs> we literally just started. Yeah, we're on six. Well, I think. there's a there's a chunk of other people that. Oh, okay, we'll be, yeah, we'll do both. The Marais. Yeah, with Vince and Jess also, but um, oh, okay. that's what I was gonna say. If I mean, perfect. Yeah, I have a text list. If if we Proverbs five was today, but if you don't mind jumping in on Proverbs five or Proverbs six, I can just add everyone to the text list. Um, no, I mean it's a few. Yeah, we want. Uh, we'll figure it. We'll we'll start at the beginning, and then uh, maybe when we end Proverbs, we'll kind of resync after mm -hmm. Proverbs is over. We'll resync everybody to one right. book, just so that everyone can can do one chapter and doesn't feel rushed and like I said I want to set us up for success with this so uh, keep doing doing what you're doing because it's the exact same thing you'll just be a couple of books ahead of us and then we'll resynchronize. We'll be able to tell the future. Yeah. 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 This is what you will read tomorrow. Uh, there's an anagram I think it's called for a Bible and it fits what you're sharing is B-I-B-L-E basic instructions before leaving earth. <laughs> okay. Well, let's finish up uh, fellowship today, and then if we have any other ideas or whatnot, then we'll just definitely, you know, throw those around, and we'll get this set up even more. I know that once we get the, uh, the new website up and running a little bit more, um, that we will put it there too. But doing the text thing sounds good, also. Um, so, but I'm excited. Who's excited? Yeah. All right. So. Um, I'm going to fill this in front. God, I just want to thank you so much. I want to thank you for the wonderful love that you have for us and everything that you have put in place for us to be here tonight, for us to have this life, to live for you and with you. And I just thank you so much for this word, for this book that you authored, that you were able to find men and women to inspire and uh, to have them write down these words for us to be able to read, to be able to take in and to, to know what your will is for our lives, to be able to receive all those blessings that come from reading and that wisdom. And I just pray for this group. I pray that you would help us to fight the things that come up in our daily life and fight for that time with you, fight for the time to, to read your word and to pray to you and to have a relationship with you. I pray that we would stand side by side each other as brothers in arms to uplift each other and help each other to continue to stay steadfast on your word. I pray for every individual here tonight and for their hearts and for their lives. I ask you to bless them and take care of them. And uh, I pray for the rest of our night together here in fellowship that we can continue to take care of one another and bless one another. I pray for that. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. 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 We have a birthday. So, we're going to sing it, and we'll just bring out the cake to whose birthday it is. You ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Shanti. Happy birthday to you. God bless you. Sandwiches. But they were during three of the turkey coffee sandwiches. Turkey coffee sandwiches. Really? That really stuck out in my mind. But during three of the different mass food issues, guys. Yeah, it is. Notice that. My word is true. My word is true. Yes, me. How are you? Good. Yeah, I'm doing it. 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 I'm <laughs> I teleported to the new manifestation we just found out about. Teleportation. Yeah, friggin'. It's better 
in every single category. Manifestations are all about what guys are doing. That's so dope. Like, exactly. But it's fine. I mean, it's not the best for us. 97%. That was a good use of technology in the classroom. Yep. If I were your principal, I would approve. I'm just saying. Pretty much, yeah. I haven't had a watch out for this game, but I heard very much about you. Hi, I'm You know what? I know that I'm online. Back in white. I get a lot of junk shots, like right now. Thank you for asking. It's pretty tricky, right? I was like, all right, fellowship is over. I'm going to turn my computer off. My parents. My parent probably get all the scenes like <laughs> people's cats <laughs> <Check laughs> like, right on the computer. What are you doing? Uh, <laughs> tuned into fellowship. Yeah, whatever. <laughs>